Good afternoon. Uh, I am Guy Ponce de Leon. I'm Chief Executive Officer of PMA Consultants LLC. I formed the company in 1971. Technology was new, things were getting computerized, and people, well, a lot of people, including contractors, you know, I mean, need help. We want innovation to be um, something we always do so that uh, we make a difference. When CPM was created, we didn't have updated schedules. All the schedules were in the future. So the algorithm is eminently suited for projecting something in the future, mathematically, algorithmically. But once you start to split a schedule into a prospective and a retrospective window, the algorithm was never planned for that. So the algorithm has not grown along with that, which is part of the reason that the scheduling has become kind of a robotic sort of thing, you know, and not as helpful as it could be. So we set out to uh, um, do another method that would be really more suitable for where scheduling was going by then, right? So um, we knew what CPM limitations were and um, how to create algorithms and, and through many other uh, many other instances of eureka moments, we've gotten where we are today. Like one of the eureka moments was when in 2008, I think, or seven, we had a meeting showing NetPoint. And, and I show how if you grab an activity or three activities, you could move them all on, in the schedule, you know, and on the canvas. What if I just grab one activity and I move it around? Will everything else move with it on its own? I said to myself, gosh, you know, that's, how are we going to do that? <laughs> You're talking about a, uh, an instantaneous interactive algorithm. And uh, so I had to go up reading, but I learned that there's a set of algorithms called self-healing. Fortunately, uh, the way GVM is set up, I figured out we had the perfect attribute that you could heal when it got broken instantaneously, which is the gap. GPM, because of the dual solution to the problem, it has so much algorithmic power that we haven't even, you know, done all of it yet. You know, large construction projects is a trillion dollar global spend. And the inefficiencies that we experience by dealing with a 66-year algorithm are, are mind-boggling to me. And if we can get this done and we can market acceptance, we'd be diverting billions of dollars into other expense that right now is getting wasted on disputes and late projects. So that's, that's the aspiration. A GPM algorithm is basically it's like its own little universe and it's got its own rules. And all the objects, we are objects in this human three-dimensional space, right? But it, and, the, and the GPM world, GPM is, is, is the physics, you know, that controls how things interact. The more patterns we amass, that body of knowledge it becomes geometrically more valuable. Yeah, we have about nine to ten patterns. You know, the original, the original algorithmic uh, algorithms, and then the self-healing algorithm. Um, we have two patterns on density zooming. How do I know that my large, you know, obese schedule, <laughs> in so far as activities, is faithful to the thinking of the people that I sat with months ago? The only way to do that would be to summarize that schedule and then compare it to their thinking, but that is prohibitive. Ever since 1971, 72, I started to create bloated schedules. I was left with the unsolved problem. How do I, how do I zoom out, you know, and summarize it and, and have the people that are not scheduled to see it and to say, yep, you're right, or no, we've got to fix this. And we took on it, and uh, I mean, I think that that, that was great innovation, so, so great that patent office gave us two patents in months. In a matter of months, they gave us two patents on that. Uh, so that was uh, our recent two most patents on density zooming, which is, you know, auto summarization. You know, and, and the innovation team did to my original spec that I wrote in 2020, maybe, and they, they just made it so much more powerful. It's just, uh, just amazing. I mean, and the people that are seeing Summit, which is right now our big emphasis, Project Summit, they, they can't wait till we get the thing out, you know? I think we're gonna take the market by storm, is my sense. People are gonna be, and, and, you know, we have all kinds of protocols. We're not telling you to abandon your P6 schedule, unless you want to. We just, it's just bring it into the doctor's office for an annual physical, okay? Bring it into Summit, fix it all up, because you can see it's algorithmic 
all the way and then spit it back out to your CPU and, and then go at it again, right? So we can, we can um, coexist with archaic CPU software until such point in time where, you know, then you just give up and you give up the horse carriage and you just stick to the Porsche. When you are faced with a stochastic problem, a problem that is basically random inherently, there are three ways to solve it. You can solve it theoretically, but in most cases, that is unrealistic, it's prohibitive. Too many equations, too many variables, it's just undoable. You can do a three object, five object, theoretically, but you cannot do 5,000, <laughs> incomprehensible. There's no computer large enough to do that. The second option is you do it statistically. You sample from the distribution, and we do that in Monte Carlo simulation. And, and you do that, well, that's the use of the problem. If you, don't, if you don't do the first two, then the, the, uh, the fallback option is you approach it deterministically. How do you do that? You recognize there's thousands of scenarios, but you get you learn the people, you responsible stakeholders, and you can propose, you can postulate the world reason scenario today, one scenario. In the world of project scheduling, we've taken forever the third option. That when you take a stochastic and inherently stochastic problem and you solve it to solve it deterministically, that you, you, you make a commitment to do two things for it to be, um, to be a good solution. The, the first one is that you always keeping your scenario current. At some point in time, it's going to be obsolete either because everything changed or because you changed it to reflect current reality, right? And you make a commitment to always be current at all times and when you have a current plan today, every plan before that is worthless. That was your best guess. Well, you're less smarter today than you were two months ago. I mean, that plan two months ago was your best guess there, and it was legitimate and valid and everything. But today, it isn't worth the papers written on because you're less smarter today. So you understand that anything before that is obsolete. Now, um, in, in critical path, you know we know we're solving the problem deterministically, and we have this concept of total float. And total float says if an activity has total float, you can delay it by that much, that many days, and not delay the project, right? But the reality is, that's just based on one scenario. It is preposterous to think that that's really true in a more comprehensive way. Through our research and Dr. Vig's, Dr. Vig's contributions, we've learned now that we can we can calculate a stochastically safe float, a float that actually considers all the scenarios on your project. And so now we can identify in a deterministic schedule where float actually is negative versus positive. And then we can correct that by crashing activities in order to restore positive float stochastically in a one-off scenario. That's what, uh, uh, that's what that concept does. And I mean, it's, I mean, I don't know how long it takes for people to sort of figure it out, be able to make use out of it. But even, you know, like everything else, we're way ahead of the game. We had a client, uh, uh, you know, um, Abbott Laboratories, who were using an early runs of Project Summit with them. And the first time they, Eduardo Nazario loaded their schedule, MS project, and to summit, it was they were able to see it, and Eduardo could zoom out, and he could change the time scale, and construction could be could be crunched in, and validation could be expanded, so you could sort of see it in detail. I mean, they they uh, they became addicted to it right there and then, and they you know, and they now they require you know that we do that in all the projects, and I mean, nobody else can do that. It's going to bring value to them, no question. So we're not, we're not just taking advantage of situation. We're going to bring value to them that they wouldn't otherwise had. Long-term relationships, I mean, unending relationships. Like, like you know, we have 30 relationships, 30, 20. Those things just go on forever. And like, like, like we're talking about tomorrow and Saturday, you know, 
client coupling, where basically you have share, you know, interests towards towards achieving value. Because critical path is powerless with algorithmically on a schedule and retrospectively. It has no ability to calculate anything left of the data date. Because of that, um, we schedulers have tended to neglect, they focus a lot on the, on the prospective portion of the schedule, you the plan going forward. But they, they, have, they have given up on the notion that the actual part of the schedule has a lot of future value, you know, as to what things really do take. Not what you plan to happen, but it actually did happen, right? And so they neglect the actualized portion of the schedules. However, like most projects, finish late, 90%, 80%, or whatever, and disputes arise because the delay was unresolved. What happens? We completed the project, the schedule is progressed out all the way, but it's worthless. It's inaccurate, it's incorrect. It's not even mathematically, it's not algorithmic. So what happens? We spend millions of dollars. I could imagine that in globally it's billions annually in trying to rebuild what happened on the project, you know, and arguing about things. And GPM is going to it's going to induce you to accurately update your schedules left of day to day. So you, when you complete the project, if you didn't resolve delay, and you're going to have a, a fully algorithmic schedule that you can resolve it right there and then without having to spend billions building something else after the fact. There's a big difference that innovation is going to bring to the whole business of finishing the project early and resolving the disputes post-completion quickly with actual factual evidence that was developed contemporaneously, not after the fact. Innovation is an interesting journey um, because you have no clue what you're going to be into and where you may end up. And your, your awareness, if you feel the vision, if you're serious about it and successful, it's going to be negligible that you will accomplish. So innovation is a way to open your eyes to things that you've been ignoring and thinking you're doing well, and maybe, maybe you're not, you could do better.